Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to part 2 of Vue.js getting started in Dart. Now we're going to resume from where we left off last time, which I believe was before we got to the section that has the title handling user input. And what we're going to be doing in part 2 is going through the rest of the examples and seeing how we can reproduce them in Dart. So let's get started. So at the end of part one, we ended with this app for example, whereby we render a um, number of list items onto the page. So this is what it looks like currently. And then we run this logic, which inserts new item onto our list. So now we're going to be carrying on looking at handling user input. View gives us the V on directive um, to attach event listeners to invoke methods on our view instances. So we'll have to build a structure that looks like this. And using this template, um, hopefully it will give us this result whereby when we click reverse message, the text reverses. So let's see how we're going to do that. I'll start by copying this template into our index.html page right here and then in main dot dot I'll create an app5 variable and assign a view instance to it. I'll create my view options, I'll pass in my element and then I'll pass in my data property which is a view data options object which takes in a message property and then we've got hello view.js. So let's save this and see what it looks like in the browser. Okay. So we've got it rendered here. Of course, we are getting an error related to reverse message, which is expected because we've not done this bit yet. So we're going to do this next. But at least we can confirm that the template is being rendered on the screen. Now what we need to do is to define a methods prop which takes in this object containing reverse reverse message. So let's see how we can do that. We'll start by creating an anonymous class annotated with JS and anonymous. So we'll create this class called view method options and inside we define our factory constructor called the method options which takes in a function called reversed message and then we need to define a getter for this function get reversed message okay so let's save this And then let's try and use it in our main dot dart file. So I'll add a comma here and then add a methods prop which won't exist because we need to define it for our view options class. So if I go back here in view options. to define that here and then define that here methods okay so I go back to main that then we should now be able to define methods here which is view method options and then we've got our reverse message in here which takes a function so for now I'll just print Hello world. So let's try this and see what we get. And I just realized I spelled it wrong. So reverse message. Reverse message. So I'll save all of that. That should fix our problem. 
Okay, so when I click reverse message, we get hello world. Okay, so that's good. When we come back to the documentation here, we find that in reverse message, we need access to the view instance created and then access message on it, then set it to that. So we need a way to access um, the this context in this function. So if we come back in our main dot dot, reverse message is just set to a plain dart function. In order to use a dart function in JavaScript, we need to use a method that the dart team provides. So to use this method, we need to import the dart.js library. And then in dart.js library, we use a method called allow interrupt capture this. So we need to wrap this function in that. And then doing this will now give us access to our view instance in this function and um, we can do that by capturing that here our view instance so i can show you what that looks like by doing a console log in here or console dare instead and then i'll pass in the view instance so i'll save that and then i'll collapse this terminal then i'll go back to the page reload so if I click on reverse message you see our view instance with all the properties we want and we are looking for this one in particular this message one okay so let's come back here and we should be able to do view instance dot message and now we see that it's not working which is because this instance is, is treated as a dynamic type and dynamic types don't have a message property so in order for us to be able to access this message property we need to cast this to the view type that way so that way it's set to uh, the view class that we created. And of course, we need to define this message getter on our view instance. So let's go do that now. If we come back to app.dart and we come back here, we can define a getter for it. Oh, in fact, we need a setter for message. String. And let's define a getter for it as well. Just of type string. So I'll save that. I'll come back to main dot dot. And yeah, there we have it. Message there. And then we can set it to our view instance dot message. And then we want to split it into an array. So if I come back here, we want to split it and then reverse it and join it. So I'll split it to an array. And then we want the reversed, which is an iterable. Then we need to convert it to a list and then join it. So let me save this and come back to our page. And if I click this, it reverses okay that's good and i'll just rename this to view and try again to ensure nothing broke okay okay that's good all right so let's go to the next example so in the next example the view also provides a view model directive that makes two way binding between form input and upstate to breeze. Okay, so 
So let's copy this into our index.html. And then let me get rid of that, we don't need it. Pass in L, which is up six. And then data, which is view data options. And then in the define a message, and that message is hello view. So in fact, this should be good. So let's try it out. So view, so when I move this, it updates as expected. works brilliant okay so let's go to the next example composing with components all right so component is essentially an instance with predefined options okay so registering a component is done by creating essentially a static method called component which takes in a string and an object with options. To be able to create a view component, we need to come back to app.dart and then we need to define a static function and then we call it component. However, though, this function takes in two arguments so one being a string and the other being an object, and we need a way to tell dart that this is what it expects so instead of using a generic function as such we can use a, a type definition so, so, so that looks like that type def and then we call it view component and then that takes in a not coid that'll take in a function it takes in a string of the component name and then it will take in a view component options and we'll call it options so we'll, we'll create this in a bit but then this is the structure we expect for the component static method so I'll replace static with view component and then we need to define this one so I'll create this factory class as such called view component options, which takes in a couple of properties. Well, let's start with template. So in this example, it takes in a template, which is a string. Yeah, and we need to define a getter for our template all right so let's see if we can let's see if we can try it now so I'll come to go to our index HTML I'll create a div with the ID of app 7 which takes in an ordered list and in that ordered list we've got this to do item tag now before this renders we actually need to define our component in here so I'll call it a view called view.component which takes in a string with the component name and then we've got, we've got our component options which takes in the template To create a view instance with view options, our element is up seven. Okay, so what happens when I save this? I come to our page, you see nothing yet because it can't find up seven. I need to save this file, and there we go. We got our first item here. So let's carry on with the documentation. 
So we're able to modify the component definition to make it accept a, a props property. So in order to do that, we'll go back to app.dart and then in view component options, we define our props, which is a list. In fact, I'll make it a list of strings. So props that way and I'll change it here too. So that's the first step. And now we need to amend our template to take this, this to do prop, specifically the text property. So I'm going to to our main file and then I will add props. And then I'll amend our template to be to do dot text. Okay. And then I will copy all of this and paste it in here. So in order to get this fully rendering, we need to create another property called grocery list, which takes in a list of objects with an ID property and a text property. Now this looks awfully similar to our to-do class that we created in part one. So what I'll do instead is, instead of copying all of this and recreating it and adding that extra property, I'll simply insert it here. So I'll create an int of ID and then I'll create a getter for it, ID here. So this will allow us to use to do uh, for these bits as well. So let me save this. And then if I come to main.dart and I define my data property, we need to define a getter for grocery list since it's currently just to do's. So to do that, we'll go to app.dart and then we go to view data options and we're essentially doing this but for grocery list I mean I could easily reuse to do's but just for the sake of following this example I'll just use grocery list save that and now we should be able to come here have our grocery list define our to do's and I think I'll speed this up all right so let's check our page see what is expected okay perfect let me reload okay that's perfect so we've got vegetables cheese whatever else humans are supposed to eat okay and I think at this point the, the examples end perhaps you can set the challenge for yourself to try and replicate this using this view interrupt solution. Okay, so this concludes the tutorial. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed it and you found it quite useful. If you liked what you've seen so far, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon for updates when new videos are released. As always, if you've got comments, um, just let me know down below. Um, like this video, share with other people. All right, thank you.